Join me as your host, Roderick Swift, every Wednesday, Musicians Matters Podcast, live right here at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Positive Power, 21 Christian Media, LLC. Let's go! Welcome to another session of Musicians Matters podcast. Agape Productions Global LLC presents Drummers United International Music and Arts Festival, July 2023. Purpose Driven in the Community is going to be at Fresh Wind Ministries 3660 North Rancho Suite 108, and it starts at 9 a.m till 2 p.m. We're going to have Bruce Harper. We're going to have Biff Keith. We're going to have Patrick Warley. We're going to have more. And it's going to be 3660 North Rancho Suite 108, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and then we're going to have, um, I would like to thank my sponsors, the gas stations, the recording studios. That's off of 2270 Lorsley Road, North Las Vegas, Nevada, 89030 Music Lessons, Las Vegas. Fire Public Educations, Las Vegas and Rescue and Prevention. That's uh, off of 500 Casino Center Boulevard, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89101. Name phone number 702-229-0331. Um, if you missed any of our uh, podcasts, you can go to uh, our podcast. You can go to Positive Power Christian and Media LLC on the Weekend Channel on Spotify, Google Play, Speaker, etc., or my website, drummersunitedinternational.com, and tap on Musicians Matters Podcast. Willie Brown and Friends Bio. Willie Brown is one of the funniest comedians and chocolates on the planet. He, along with his partners, Woody, Uncle Rufus, and Auntie T, have been entertaining audiences worldwide for years. He performs largely at comedy clubs, churches, theaters, family nights, and corporate events. Brown has been seen on his very own dry bar comedy special titled On the Side Myself. Huckleby TV, Bounce TV, Sitcom, Last Call, The Ricky Smiley TV Show, BET Comic View, HBO Jeff Comedy Jam, The Movie All About You, Showtime Network's Barbershop, and more. He's open to, He's open for Marvin Sapp, Yolanda Adams, David and Tama Man, Fred Knight, Frankie Beverly and May, Stevie, Steve Harvey, and a host of others. He recently launched his very own YouTube channel featuring Woody with the Scoop, Minister Deacon Uncle Rufus, Maya and the Woody Maya and Woody Safety Tips and Don Lemonade from CNN. Originally from New Haven, now living in Atlanta, Georgia, please put your hands together for the comedy of Willie Brown and Friends. For more information, go to WDB Willie Brown and Lips. And Woody.com. <laughs> so what you been doing during the pandemic? In church hopping. Church hopping. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I go to 25, 30 different churches every Sunday on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Soon they get to the offering, I switch to another church. <laughs> I pass to say the time go to the local church. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things happened during the pandemic. Yeah, we went through some stuff. Black Lives Matter. Black puppets matter. We went through all kinds of stuff. Our Kelly went back to jail. Went to jail. Oh, no. Oh, no. on you, we step. <laughs> the problem 
is, people keep saying they woke, but they're walking around sleepwalking. That's what it is. They say they woke. Well, you got to listen to the voice of God. What do you mean? I'm just saying. R. Kelly, God was talking to R. Kelly. He said, my mind keep telling me no. That was God. That was God. My mind keep telling me no. That was God right there. Why didn't you listen? He, he kept going. I don't see nothing wrong. With a little, oh, no, no, that was God. So listen to God. So much going on. We live in such a. Everybody's so sensitive. Yeah, this is a cancel culture. Cancel culture, you. Yeah. How you gonna suspend Whoopi Goldberg from the view for having a view? <laughs> That's gonna make no sense. This is a show without the view. You can't have a view. That made no sense. Then they got this critical race theory. Y'all heard about that? You heard about the critical race theory? They want to they want to remove black history from the from the history book. But man, come on now. The devil is alive. <laughs> they already doing that. What do you mean they already? They been doing that. They just, what they tell us when we was in school? They said, George Washington is the father of our country. Ain't that what they said? Yeah. Crack if that's what they, you heard when you was in school. Yeah, Joe Washington is the father of our country. I beg to differ. You beg to differ? Yeah. I believe that Nick Cannon is the father of our country. That's, what, that's the father right there. Nick Cannon, you are the father. You know you are. You might be. That joker have four kids this year. They gonna start calling him Nick at night. <laughs> you don't let no grass grow on that issue. Right? <laughs> Nick, have you ever heard of Planned Parenthood? Good <laughs> God of man. Let's welcome Willie Brown and friends. How you doing, Uncle Good. Willie? I'm doing great, Rod. How are you? Everything is awesome. I'm excited just to have you on the phone tonight, man. It's, it's going to be, be the, here. It's going to be an awesome experience. Um, tell us a bit, little about yourself. Well, you know, um, I I am a comedian ventriloquist, and uh, I don't work alone. You know, I got I got Woody. Hey, how y'all doing? And I got uh, Uncle Rufus. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and um, I have Auntie. Hey, Roderick, you show sure is handsome. <laughs> and um, I've been doing this for a long time, a long time. I'm originally from New Haven, Connecticut, and uh, I've been uh, I've been ventriloquist since I was 13 years old. Um, man, I did it through high school. I I went to Hampton University, uh, Hampton, Virginia, HBCU. Graduated uh, in 1984. And moved mm -hmm. to Washington D.C. and I started getting into the comedy clubs, and I worked alongside uh, people like Chris Thomas, who was the mayor of Rap City back in the day. Um, let's see, Teddy Carpenter, uh, Tony Woods. These are some of the guys. Wanda Sykes, Dave Chappelle. They were all kind of coming up at the time that I was coming up in Washington D.C. And I stayed there for a number of years. In '98. I went out to Los Angeles and taped for BET, Comic View. D.L. Hughley was the host. That was the first season. That was my first uh, national television experience. And after that, I just started uh, touring a lot more up and down the East Coast. And in 95, I went to New York. I taped Russell Simmons' uh, HBO Def Comedy Jam. And um, after that, I really started traveling a lot more. And then in '98, I moved. I moved to Los Angeles. Wow! 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 That's amazing. That's amazing. You got a lot on your belt. What I'm trying to find out, Uncle, is this: uh, How can you do it? Uh, um, do using uh, the same face 
and changing uh, with the the, the 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 puppets and everything. How how can you do it? How do you do it? Well, that's that's the art of ventriloquism. Um, you know, you got to be able to have a voice that's different from your voice. You got to uh-huh. be able to um, work your characters. That's what they call um, figure figure manipulation. Because uh, our, our our puppets are called figures. That's the professional figures. term. Some people call them dummies. Hey man, don't say that, man. Don't say that. God, God don't like ugly. Okay. Uh, not, they don't like when you call them dummies. Yeah, you did it again. You did it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Uh, figures. There you go. That's better. That's better. Uh, the, that's the professional term, and so you you know it's an art to it. You gotta you gotta make your figure stay alive. When you're performing, you want to keep him moving and as if he's a real person. So if I treat him like he's real, then you treat him like he's real. But if I have him sitting there and he he's just looking and straight ahead and he don't never move his head or turn around or look at nothing or yeah, he's not gonna look like he's real. Now if I can make 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 his mouth move, and you hear a voice that's different from my voice, that really helps to create the illusion that he's that he's actually talking. I am talking, man. We you talking about? I am talking. Okay, there you go. See, but, uh, Y'all can't see me now. You can't see if his lips is moving right now. You can't tell. But I am talking. <laughs> so, Uncle, uh, as far as your brand, how did, how long did it take you um, to get to um, for you to know that you have a brand? You know what I'm saying? Uh, that I have a brand? That I, that I had a brand? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I didn't know anything about a brand when I was a kid. You know, I was just uh, I was adventurous. I was, you know, I like I liked um, magic tricks, and uh, I used to send away for little tricks and things to. To fool the kids at school. That was my whole motivation was to fool fool my friends. And okay. I found a home study course in the back of a comic book on how to okay. be a ventriloquist. I sent away for it. And every month they would send me a new lesson on what to do. And then it, I would have to send my, I would have to record my voice and send it in. Back then it was on cassette. So I would record it on a cassette and send it in to the guy. He would listen to it to see if his voice sound good and he would grade it, send it back to me, and then I, you know, I would practice in front of the mirror every day. And I got into a a family talent show at Nationwide Insurance Company. I lived in New Haven, Connecticut, and okay. my mother worked for Nationwide. And she said, "We're gonna have a family talent night, and you can be in the show if you want to." And so I just started practicing for it, and I put together my little routine, and after, and they loved it. And after the show. They asked me how much I charged. I never forget. I was 13 years old, and I was thinking to myself, "I said, what? I can make money and have fun at the same time? What? Are you kidding me?" And that was it. I mean, after that, we was on the road. No, <laughs> then I I got into a talent show uh, downtown New Haven, Connecticut, at the Roger Sherman Theater. It was an old theater there, and uh, I won first place. It was 150 dollars. This is way back. And that was like a big deal. And from that show, I never stopped working. Every show always led to another show. I was 15 years old, and I was working in the nightclubs in New Haven. There's no way I should have been in there, in there, but I don't know. Back then, I don't know. They let me come in there. I get into the talent show, and I shouldn't have been in. I shouldn't have been in the nightclubs. But uh, you know, things were different back in those days. At 15, I talked my mother and father into let me go to the national ventriloquist convention in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, right outside of Cincinnati. Now, it was a four-day convention. I had already saved up my money from cutting grass and raking leaves Mm -hmm. and and shoveling snow. I had the money, and I sent it off, and I paid for my hotel rooms and and conference fee. And And you know my parents took me to the airport to catch the plane by myself. I was 15, and, um, I landed in Cincinnati. No, yeah, I landed in Cincinnati. I had to catch a shuttle over to the Drawbridge Motor Inn in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. And when I got to the hotel, all the other ventriloquists were there, and some of them had their figures out. 
there was about three hundred people I think with their with their with their puppets. It was amazing. And it was time for me just to check in and there was a woman at the table and I went to check in and she saw my name and t- she saw that I had already paid my money and gave me they gave me the keys to my room. And I was fifteen. Look, I didn't have no driver's license, ID or nothing. I mean, <laughs> who does that? You know, you can never do that today, but they let they let me do. I, but my parents believed in me. They believed in my ability, and uh, obviously I believed in it. And I and I won, I won the most promising ventriloquist in the junior in the junior competition that year. Wow! Wow! Yeah, so it just kind of made me feel like I was on to something. I had something special, and I and I always believed that, and I never stopped doing it, man. All through college, going to Hampton, I. I would do shows for the fraternity and sorority functions on campus and off for the officers' clubs down in uh, Hampton, Newport News, Norfolk. And, and I, would, I would sometimes go to the clubs. They had a talent show. I, I would win those. Every time they had a talent show, I win that talent show. Wow. They never seen, they never seen no, uh, you never seen talent like that before. You know, you always see uh, singers or dancers, but you ain't never seen no ventriculus. Ventriloquist. No. Ventriculus. No. Ventriloquist. Ventriculist. All right. Just just forget it. I already did. Okay. <laughs> Help him, Lord. Help him. Help him. Yeah. Help him. Yeah, so, man, um, I just kept going. I, I just, I believe what they said. They said, you can go as far as you want, and I believed it, you know, and I wanted to be a professional. And so when I got out of college, I moved to Washington, D.C., and mm-hmm. uh, I had married my college sweetheart. We had a, we had two children, and I was doing shows. I worked for Xerox Corporation. I was in sales at Xerox, and I would do I would I would do my sales during the day, but at night I would hit the clubs and do my comedy. And I I, I just worked on it and worked on it, and then um, I started doing school programs during the day, school shows, and. At night, I would do comedy clubs. I had le- I, by this time I left Xerox, okay. and I was just doing comedy full time. I was doing enough school shows during the day and shows at night, and then I was traveling. And in '98, I said, "I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can really make it in Hollywood." And so I I drove out to Los Angeles, and that was that was always my dream. And I got out there and did the Hollywood Shuffle, and it was it was an amazing journey. I stayed out there. And I got into the Screen Actors Guild. I got into some commercials and a few low budget movie movies, a few a few no budget movies. Um mm-hmm. I, got, I got my name I got my name painted on the wall of the um world famous comedy store. If you go out there you'll still see it. You know, I was a paid regular at the comedy store. I worked up there alongside um Andrew Dice Clay, uh, Eddie Griffin, Damon Wayans, Arsenio Hall, all those all those guys would be would pop in there. You never know who was going to come to the to the comedy store, you, and you never know who you had to go on after. I, I had to go on after all them guys, you know, and you, you just got to be good, man. And I would work the uh, Laugh Factory, the Improv, and just started touring. But what happened, I got with this agency called Clean Comedians, okay. and they said you got to be clean all the time. You can't just be clean when you want to be clean. You got to be clean all the time. and. Right. uh I it they started putting me in churches, churches all around the country. I was doing all kind of church, black church, white, multicultural, uh mm-hmm. Latino, uh non denominational, all types of churches, man, and it really just it sharpened my walk for Christ. And I I rededicated my life and I just kept going and and then I started going to the C C A which was the Christian comedy association conferences and i started meeting comedians that were pastors that that had gone to divinity school and i was like you're a comedian and you're a pastor and they said yeah i said i'm a youth pastor i said for real he said yeah and i don't know i'll tell you roger that thing man just jumped off on me man i don't know i, I was inspired by it and i remember meeting um john gray Met John Gray, you, you know, years years back, and you know he was doing back background singing for Kirk Franklin, and he was wow. doing you know 
comedy and plays. Kirk Franklin really introduced him. He was he introduced him as a comedian, and he came on board. And he was, I mean, he was, he he blew up real fast. But then he went in. Then I found out he was really an event. He was an evangelist. And I said, man, that dude can preach, you know. And yeah. um, that's amazing. But I was reading Jeremiah one, and the word says, "I'll put the words on your lips." Yes. And that's when I I realized I had received my call, and I said, "Man, I'm more than a comedian." I said, "If I can tell jokes in the church and around the world, I can sure I can sure tell people about Jesus Christ." That's said, right. That's the least. That's the least I could do. And you you know you can't stay in a church where you're being fed the word of God on a regular basis consistently and sit and sit in the back back row and be comfortable. Right. You you're gonna eventually move up to the middle. You're gonna eventually move to the front. Eventually you're gonna become a deacon or become a altar worker or you're gonna you're gonna do something. You're gonna grow because it's a living word. The word is alive and well. And it's 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 inside of us and it's growing us. And uh I ended up going back to school, man, and got my master's degree in uh theology. I went I went to Ohio Christian University and um uh, got my master's degree and then I got on my pastor's ministry and training program. It was a, for about that's about uh, ten months, eleven months almost. And uh, I became a minister at Tabernacle of Praise Church International in McDonough, Georgia, with my pastors, uh, TJ and Shanae McBride. They're both from San Francisco. And wow. they, they, they're some, they're some powerful young folks, man. Uh, they came here and opened up. They got, we now have three churches. I mean, and they're doing it. They got a great youth ministry, uh, great missions ministry. We go overseas to Africa, Jamaica, Haiti. We, we've been all over Belize, I mean, this, this ministry is really on the move, and um, I never thought I'd do any of this stuff. You know, I never thought I'd be a minister. I do remember when I finished my new members class. We were in the youth sanctuary, and I, as soon as I finished my class, I, I walked through the hallway, and I walked into the main sanctuary. No, nobody was in there; the lights were off, and I walked into the main sanctuary, and I felt an anointing. I felt the presence of God. I knew that I was not a bench member anymore. I knew I was a minister. I was a minister before the title. I was a minister before I became a minister. I knew it. I saw myself walking down the aisle with my arm outstretched, ushering people in to know Jesus Christ. I saw myself doing it, you know. And so the title, the title is just a formality. It's, it's in your heart. You exactly. you 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 already are that thing that God created you to be. You already you already it. And um, I just walked into it, man, and continued to perform and do gospel comedy. My wife and I produced a series called the Willie Brown and Friends Gospel Comedy Live. You can see it on um, you can see it on YouTube. We got a YouTube channel called Made You Laugh. Uh, M A D E the letter U. L A F F dot com made you laugh dot com. Mm-hmm. You can go there and subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got you can go you can you can just go type gospel comedy live Willie Brown and friends gospel comedy live and we have four episodes and it was really good and you can go there and and watch our comedy. Every show had three comedians and one gospel music artist and I hosted it. And we really made a good footprint for ourselves out there. I wanted to create something that had never been done before. I wanted to have, like, I wanted to be, like, the Barry Gordy of gospel comedy, so to speak. You know, I wanted to create a platform for young Christian comedians so they they would be seen in a positive light. And then we we also book the comedians. We book them on tours and different places and I've been really blessed, man. Blessed to travel the world. Uh, I've been all over the world because of my my gift of comedy, and that's what the word the word says that a man's gift to make room for him, and it has. It certainly has taken me all around the world, and uh, I'm at, in fact I'm getting ready to to start doing some doing cruise ships. 
Wow. And so I'll, I'll be touring. I'll still be touring the world. <laughs> but I've been I've been all over the world doing military tours for uh, MWR Entertainment for the Army. I've done stuff for the Navy. I've done stuff for the Marines, Air Force, and I've been to Iraq, Japan, Korea, uh, Germany several several times. I've been to Bosnia. I've been to uh, Sarajevo, uh, Kosovo. Um, South Africa, Amsterdam, England, you know, I've been all over Europe performing, and uh, it's been a gift, a great gift. And I recently became a chaplain of a woman's correctional facility. This is during COVID. After the, wow. uh, the second year of COVID, I became a chaplain because all of our work had shut down because the churches weren't doing anything and the theaters had stopped. And I got tired of being at home, so I was going to the men's prison here, um, Jackson Prison, down here uh, in Georgia, and and I was visiting every day, uh, excuse me, every week with our prison ministry team. And then uh, the chaplain asked me. He said, man, "He said, man, you ought to." He said, "Why don't you become a chaplain?" He said, "You you have the uh, credentials." He said, "You're a minister. You you know you got the education." He said, he said, it won't affect your, your shows, and you could be um, making your own schedule. So I I didn't really want to work in the prison. To be honest with you, I was like, nah, I don't really want to work in the prison. But I kept going down to the prison every week, and God was dealing with me, dealing with my insecurities, taking away my fears. And I went ahead, um, I went online, and I applied for the position, and, and they called me in for an interview. I got the job, and I became chaplain, and... And it was amazing, man. It was, it was a, but I became chaplain of a woman's facility, a wow. woman's cor- correctional facility called West Central in Zebulon, Georgia. And I did it for over a year. I just stepped down about six weeks ago, but I did it for well over a year, from October, from October, two thousand twenty-two to about six weeks ago. And uh, it was amazing. It was like one one of the most amazing experiences of my life and got a chance to uh, lead a lot of women to Christ. And I don't, Amen. I don't know, I don't know how much I was able to do. You know, I did a lot. I did a lot. I don't take credit for any of it, but God was with me the whole time. The Holy spirit was with me through the thick and thin and helped Amen. me uh, to make a difference in there for those women. Amen. Amen. I, I love it. And the reason why, because, I says God will make room for you when you never know how you know things are going. God will make room for your gifts. That's basically what I'm trying to say, and it's yeah. a blessing that He did it, that you did, didn't even see it coming, and it, it came right right then and there. And that was a blessing. The one thing I did was uh, I was obedient to Him, and. I did everything they told me to do, even on days when I didn't feel it. Like some days, you know, they would fight me in there. The system fights you. The enemy's busy, but you got to know what your purpose is, man. And um, sometimes you're gonna be in hot water, but that's how the prophets of old were. They were. If you look at the prophets in the Bible, they all went through stuff, man. They, they you know, Jeremiah went through. They tried to kill Jeremiah. I threw him in a cistern, you know. They were they weren't nice to those prophets. The only time they liked the prophet was when he was telling them something, some favorable news, something that they wanted to hear. But when the prophet showed up on the scene and told them the truth of, of what God was saying, that I was, he's not pleased. I'm not pleased with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, God's gonna put his he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna put his fist down upon you. They didn't like that, you know. And um, you know the enemy he he'll use people. He'll use whoever he can to come against you, you know, and unfortunately sometimes I don't think, you know, the system really wants to help the people that are incarcerated as much as they can. There's mm-hmm. a little bit more they can do. But I think in you some kind of way, in some kind of some kind of sick way, they might want them to stay in there because that's how they make their money. How they're making their money, exactly. I hate to say that, man. I hate to say that, but I, I'm telling you, that's what, I, that's what I've seen. You know, and I was in there, and they were fighting me. I was trying to help them, and they were fighting me. They, they wanted me in there, but they didn't want me to do nothing. 
Okay. You understand what I'm saying? They they want to be in exactly. there to they could check a box off and say, "Oh, we got a chaplain," but they didn't want me to do the work of the Lord, though. See, they okay. didn't they didn't want no transformation. But see, I'm the wrong one to put in there. You can't put me in there and and think that I'm not going to, to do the work of the Lord. I'm the wrong one. You got to go find somebody else for that. I'm not that guy. That's right. I'm gonna do the work. Amen. Amen. Yeah, man. Amen. He gonna do the work, and if he don't, if he don't do it, he gonna try to get me and Uncle Rufus to do it. And I, ain't, and I ain't, try, I ain't trying to do it. But you gonna do it, Uncle Rufus? You gonna do it? I, ain't, I ain't doing nothing. I'm retired. <laughs> Uncle Rufus, see what I, I, see what I gotta deal you. with. See, see what I gotta deal with. I, I, I can see. I can see. I can see. So, so what I'm doing now. I'm asking God to basically let me use my gift of comedy. Everything I do, man, is, is for the building of families, the building Amen. of families and helping people to be better, everything. I don't care what it is, whether it's comedy, whether it's my entrepreneurship in the business that I'm in. I'm a professional network network marketer. I'm I'm, I'm doing work in the, uh, in the metaverse with the blockchain. You know, I'm helping mm-hmm. people to, to, to increase their money. People don't know about that. They, they hear about cryptocurrency, but they don't know how it works. Some people, right. you know, they get in with the wrong people. They make a lot of mistakes. But you got to be with the right people, you know. I'm helping people to double their money uh, on a blockchain with the metaverse. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman, but I got talent. I got a lot sure. of skills. I, I don't brag about it, but God, he, he equipped me for times such as this. That's right. You know, and I got to help his people. I got to I help them in every every way I can, and that's what my whole mission is right now. That's right. Now, Uncle, give them um, give them something positive to, um, to leave off on. Man, the key man to life is to, to I think to keep God first, man. And my favorite scripture is Matthew six thirty three: Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I don't think we have to chase things. I think we should chase Jesus. I think because when you chase Jesus, I think Jesus will provide for you. He'll provide all of his all of your needs according to his riches and glory. We you know we won't have to want for anything. He's going to give us everything we need. He's going to teach us what we need to know. He's going to help us be equipped. He's going to prepare us. He's going to give us the word to say. He's just looking for some willing vessels. He's looking for men and women who aren't afraid to speak up for him in these last days because there's a lot of people out here they're playing around and they want to be uh they want to get in good with everybody they want to be uh popular they want to be liked but what i'm going to tell you something the things that you see are temporal and the things that you cannot see are eternal so all the stuff that you see in material stuff it's going to go away it's going to pass away houses cars clothes it's going to pass away all that stuff is going to go, but the things that, uh, that, that, that God has created are not going to pass away. He- Amen. Heaven, is, Amen. heaven is not going to pass away. Hell is not going to pass away, but you better determine where you're going. You need to That's make a right. decision. And you, and you got to make a decision if you believe. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But you got to have faith. Now faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. The world is is going crooked. It's going into a, a lot of dark places right now. You can see it. Everybody can see it. Open up your eyes, you can see it. But the Bible says that people will wax cold during these times. There will, there's going to be a great turning away. But I believe there's going to be a there's going to be a revival. I believe there's going to be a revival, man. And, and if God can save a sinner like me, I know He can save anybody else out there. Because he, he can do it. There's a lot of men and women in the Bible who did things that weren't they weren't right, and God forgave them, and he and they repented, and he brought them in to the fold. People like David, who was a great king, but mm-hmm. David made mistakes. He wasn't perfect, but he was a man after God's own heart. God loved David. You know, he uh, you're going to go through something in this life, but let let that what you go through mean something. Let it stand for something. You know, you can't just stand by and watch what the world is doing and act, and don't say nothing. We're seeing a lot of stuff going on out here now. 
even with the gender stuff that's going on right now. You let yes, the kids sir. determine whether or not they're a boy or a girl. A, a, mm-hmm. a, a male a male dog knows what he is. A male female mm-hmm. knows what she is. They're not sitting around wondering if, what, if they should be have a sex change or, or whatever. Only mankind does stuff like that. That's because we have we are so full of ourselves, we think that we can make those kind of decisions, but you cannot determine the, your sex at birth. You cannot determine what you are. You, you either are or you aren't. You are what God created you. You can change the outside, but you can't change the inside. Amen. You know, and it's caused a lot of confusion. People don't know. They're getting caught up in themselves. And the Bible says that these things will happen during these times, man. Be like Sodom and Gomorrah. I think we got to pray. We got to start praying more. Men and women got to pray. Fathers got to pray. Men got to take care of our families. We got. We got. We got to be. Man, we got to be committed to our family. Take care of your pride. You know, don't be over across town messing with somebody else's pride. But yes. while you over there messing with their pride, somebody messing with your pride. Guess your what? Pride. You're going to lose what you got. Yes. You know, you got to protect your pride or else the enemy will come in and he'll sift your family like wheat. Once he get the man out the way, then he got the he got the women and the children. He can do what he want with them. We got to bring mm-hmm. our family back together, man. That's what it's all about. It starts with love. You gotta love Jesus. You gotta learn how to love yourself, man. I can right. I can go on and on and on, but the Bible says you gotta love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, and love your you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Those are the first and second commandments, and all the rest fall upon those two things. So That's we right. do that. We love our neighbor like we love ourselves. We'll, we'll be doing the right thing, brother. That's right, Uncle. Now, um, where did, can they reach you at um, after tonight? Well, tonight you can go to Willie Brown and Woody dot com. Willie Brown B R O W N and Woody W O O D Y dot com. You can catch me on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Yeah, when I walk through, when I walk through, drip. I'm on TikTok. <laughs> Willie L Brown on TikTok. We blowing up on the TikTok. We blowing up. Willie L Brown, one word, and then on YouTube, made you laugh. M A D E, the letter U, L A F F dot com. And if you want to book us for shows, you can also call us 310 We're on Facebook, Willie Brown, Willie Brown and Friends. You can't miss us. That's why we always obey the law, because we know if we do something wrong, they're going to find us on social media. <laughs> you know, I can't do no time. I'm too old to go to jail, mess around and drop the soap with my old behind. Oh, no, that ain't going to happen. Come on, Mr. Rufus, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, Lead him in so, the prayer, uh, Uncle Rufus. What you say? Lead us in the prayer, Uncle Rufus. I'm going to lead you in the prayer. You all need to pay yourself first, too. You need to pay yourself first, man. <laughs> I'll talk to you about that later. Next time we come, you have us on. We're going to talk about uh, the, the cryptocurrency. Okay. okay. I think that's yes, the crypto. Yeah, I think it's the Crips and the Bloods. It's the cryptocurrency, the crypto. The Crips made the, they made up the currency, but now we're taking it back. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to lead you all in prayer. Close close your mouth and open your eyes. I mean, oh, oh. oh Close your eyes or open your bow your head. That's what I want to tell you to do. Amen. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. You are great and merciful. We thank you, Lord, for making ways out of no way, Lord God. We thank you for the 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 shoes on our table and the food on our feet, Lord God. Thank you, Father. You are wonderful. You're magnificent. Amen. We praise you in advance, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing for turning things around. For giving us a vision, Lord, helping us to see. I once was blind, but now I see, Lord God. When I grew yeah. up, I put away old childish things, and I became a man, and I started doing the things you called me to do, Lord. Watch over yeah. our children. 
Protect them in the schools. Keep them from drugs and alcohol and sexual promiscuity. Help our young men to be young men and be faithful to the young ladies, Lord God. If they ain't into her, tell them don't enter her. I say it again. If you ain't into her, don't enter her. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray for the young ladies. They just keep themselves uh, and be and be beautiful young ladies and be women. And, and and don't show everything. Don't have your body all open for everybody to see it. You don't need to do that to get a man. All you got to do is be a young lady. And the men will come, but you take your time. You don't have to be with everybody. You you work on you. And one day the, God will put someone in front of you, and you'll know if it's the right one or not. But don't give up the milk for free is what I'm saying to you. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank Amen. you, Lord. You are great. We pray for we pray for this radio station, Lord God, and this program and Brother Roderick Swift, Lord God, we pray that you bless him indeed, enlarge his territory, bless him physically, financially, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and every other lead, Lord God. You are wonderful and worthy of the praise. In the matchless, mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we all say together, Amen. A to the man. A to the man. Uncle Rufus telling you, A to the man. Amen. Thank you, Uncle. I appreciate you. Hey, that, that was pretty good, wasn't it? That was pretty good, Uncle Rufus. Well, thank you, son. Thank you. You know, I used to be a deacon, and I, I wanted, I, I tried to be the pastor, but they. They wouldn't let me be the pastor. Why not? Because they told me I was the deacon. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's all right. Hang in there. You you get there. Thank you, Rod. You're all right. Yeah, Mr. Rod. You're great, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Amen. So um, I would like to thank Jerry Royce, live uh, Positive Power Christian Media, 21 Christian Media LLC, for being there as a true brother and a true friend in Christ. Thank Tyler Gaston, the gas station recording studio, for all of my engineering work besides or as my music wise. He says dignity had always gotten us through. It was a choice and not always the easy one. But the people I respected most in life made it again and again and every single day. That's our first Lady Michelle Obama, be blessed. Join me as your host, Roger Swift, every Wednesday, Musicians Matters podcast, live right here at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Positive Power. 21 Christian Media LLC. Let's go! You are listening to Gary Slab Worldwide Podcast.